Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be going over the momentum content for the AP Physics 1 exam. Um, so momentum, it is a vector and it's denoted by the simple P and it's equivalent to mass times velocity and its units are kilograms times meters per second. So a mass of motion will have momentum and you can think of momentum as how hard it is to stop something, all right? So the first big idea of momentum is conservation of momentum. So in closed systems without external forces, momentum is always conserved. And we think about this again in terms of collisions. So here's the general equation for conservation of momentum. So it's just some of the momentum initial is equivalent to some of the momentum final, very similar to um, conservation of energy actually. Um, so you can see here that if we have two objects, let's say A and B, and they're involved in a collision, we can set it up where we break down each of the objects into their individual momentums. So for momentum of A, for example, initial, we can break it up into mass of A times velocity of A initial, uh, plus for B, we have the momentum of B as mass of B times velocity of B initial. And the, this gives us our corresponding final values, as you can see there. Now, sometimes uh, momentum is not always conserved in both directions. So you want to break up momentum into its components like we've seen in the other units, right? So because momentum, just because momentum might be conserved in the X direction doesn't necessarily mean it's conserved in the Y direction. So that's just something to be careful of. All right, so here's a little bit about center of mass. So if there are no external forces, the motion of the center of mass will not change. And this relates to the second point where the forces that are interacting uh, within the system will stay internal to the system. So those forces inside the system are not going to affect the motion of center of mass or say the velocity of the center of mass uh, from its initial position. So the second big idea is impulse. So impulse is what changes the momentum of the object. And it's denoted by the simple uh, newtons times seconds. So impulse is a vector value, and basically you can derive it from Newton's second law. We can see here that acceleration can also be expressed as change in velocity over change in time, um, and therefore we can just multiply time on both sides to get ft equals m times change in v. Um, so m times change in v is also just change in momentum. Um, so change in momentum is equal to ft, which is equivalent to impulse. And so here you can see on our motion graph here, or rather just impulse graph, it's force times time. Um, so you can see that the area under the curve represents the impulse, uh, which is change of momentum, which is just final momentum minus initial momentum. And now we wanna talk about collisions. So collisions are built on the foundation of Newton's third law. So there's a mutual force that each block is going to be experiencing um, when they collide, right? So the first type of collision are elastic collisions. So elastic collisions sort of bounce in opposite directions. And elastic collisions will conserve both kinetic energy and momentum. So here's an example. You have mass one coming towards, uh, sorry, cart one uh, coming towards cart two of M2. And cart one has a velocity of V1. Uh, cart two has a velocity of V2. And we can see that they're set equal to each other. And so their total momentum um, initially will be zero. And so if we were to set up the uh, total momentum equation of initial momentum equals final momentum, this is what it might look like. Um, we can see that we were just breaking it up. M1 times V1, that represents the initial momentum of cart one. And then everything final, as you can see here, mass one, VF1. Uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. now the second type of collision we have is inelastic so inelastic collisions where momentum is still conserved but now the kinetic energy is lost so let's say we have two masses coming towards each other we're going to have what is either perfectly inelastic so they're going to stick together and this results in the largest loss of kinetic energy and so when we set up our our uh, conservation of momentum equation we have m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2 is equivalent to m1 plus m2 and then the entire thing times v. And v is representing the final velocity in which both blocks have because they're moving as one 
object as one unit in the system. Now they can also just be elastic, so they're just gonna generally travel in the same direction. Um, and then the equation is pretty similar to the elastic equation, except now taking into account those vector directions, um, that is really what makes the difference um, in these momentum equations. So whenever you have a loss of kinetic energy and you're asked to calculate it, all you have to do is use uh, kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. Um, you can see it has the variables of mass and velocity, which usually you will be able to uh, solve if you're doing momentum equations. Um, so you can use this to find the loss of energy. And now just some final things, quick tips for momentum problems. Make sure you draw your diagrams and list the givens always for any type of problem. Identify whether there's impulse or conservation of momentum. It'll help you get started with problem solving. And then you also want to account for velocity, vectors, and directions. That's super important, um, especially for collisions. I mean, it can absolutely make the difference. So yeah, that does it for this quick content review for momentum. If you guys learned something, make sure you subscribe and thank you for watching.